All right, so this story we're going to tell, this is... <laughs> Why are you smiling at me? Because it's one of my favorite, man. I well, mean, it's one of your nicknames. It is. It's actually, I incorporated it into my wrestling gimmick. <laughs> you and, uh, spooky smiling at me right Thank now. you, thank you. That's the goal. So, you know, Dahlia, Black Dahlia, yes, when sir. you were growing up, did you have any bogeyman that your parents told you about or warned you about or any kind of superstition that, you know, they would try to spook you with or that you just stuff that you just knew without anybody telling you to where it freaked you out? Anything like that? Any any personal bogeyman that you had? Uh, well, I mean, any myth lore as a child. Um, God, he really put me on the spot here. Uh, yeah. I mean, my sister was a fucking bitch, and she was like, yeah. "Santa's not real. East the is um the two fairies two fairies not real." And I'm just like, I know. Yeah, <laughs> and I yeah, did yeah, it. Yeah. I was yeah. like, Oh my god. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, my uh, on one side of my family has German ancestry, so yeah. uh, we so always cr- we always hid the pickle in the tree. So yeah, Krumpus was always known, but. Yeah. Uh, Spookiness? No, I I was a weird kid that thought a vampire lived under my bed. But, that's awesome. I like I mean, that. Yeah. yeah, like that's something we could dabble talk, into. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Probably. We'll talk about that. No, I think there's <laughs> no more. besides Krumpus. No. Okay, so you know when I was growing up. Ooh, in the Appalachian yeah. Mountains. What yeah. did you hillbillies talk about? Well, there's there's different. You guys have some German culture. Oh yeah, too. a lot that's of a lot of yeah, a lot of German and Irish. So that's did, the reason we sound the way we do. Did you guys get spooked by Krumpus or no? No, I heard stories about Krumpus. He was the brown Santa, the one I heard about. But as far as like what I grew up with, I knew there was a boogeyman, as we called it, which I now pronounce it boogeyman. Do you remember Disney Channel's? Loved it. Uh, what was Loved it called? It. Name it. It was. Uh, I don't remember what it was called. Bump in the night. Was that it? No. Don't look under the bed. Or yeah, something? I think that was it. Yeah, oh I don't know what bump in the night is. Oh, yeah. dude. Uh, you know, and it's such a beautiful story, though. I love it. Yeah. Uh, it was. Once kids stop believing in their imaginary friends, they, they turn to the boogeyman. The boogeyman. Makes oh sense. my god, it's so poetic. So, but I had a crush on that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, the African yeah, actor. Yeah. Oh my god. I was like, he's so cute. That's and then awesome. when he turned into the boogeyman, I screamed. Oh my god, he he looks spooky. Yeah, like, it was look a good up movie. photos of I know, him. I love that movie. Um sorry, go on. No, you're so good. you guys had the you're boogeyman. Good. So I had a I had a bogeyman growing up and it was this scary mask that my grandmother had from my uncle. That scared the hell out of me. Like, that was my bogeyman for years. Like, once a year, I'd have a terrifying nightmare about this mask, and that was my bogeyman. So what I'm getting at is every culture, every society, we all have our own bogeyman, whether it's from the German myth lords you just talked about of Krumpus, where the little kids have got to be careful and they got to be good. Yeah. If not, Krumpus will snatch them away. And well, take he gets them. spanked. Yeah, well, uh, well the, he's The more spank- graphic is that he eats you. Yeah, yeah, so there's that. In uh, Hispanic culture down in Mexico, you have El Cucuy, which is their bogeyman, and he's very similar to Krumpus. He steals yeah. them away in a bag, eats them, tears them apart. Um, you have these different ones, and, you know, the man with the hook on his hand, you know, don't be doing things out in Lover's Lane. You have uh, these different things, but if you take, we're still up in the Northeast. We're just talking about the Jersey Devil. If you go up a little ways to New York on Staten Island, (coughs) you have the legend of Cropsey. Cropsey. And Cropsey was a local legend that developed in the 1970s. From what I can find, I don't know if he dates back any further, but that's when I found out this that he's more recent. Yeah, Mifflin. yeah. So, so it's a modern version. It's uh, okay. So in today's world, we got Slender Man. Slender Man was born off of the internet and creepy pastas. Then the Bunny Man. Or... Yeah, the, yeah just, yes, you got you got you got Bunny Man. Yeah, but like Slender Man was born off creepy pastas, and then you go back to that. Before that, was all about campfire tales and things like that, and that's where Cropsy comes in. Well, there's two different types. Like I, I, I there's the uh, cryptids myth lore, yeah. whereas like a serial killer myth lore that turns into yes. an entity. So. Well, it was, it was kind of like what we just talked about, the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil has this bogeyman beginning, but then it's an actual creature yeah. that's been spotted. Cryptid. So Cropsy was not that. Cropsy was this thing of it was rumored that he was an escaped patient from a mental asylum in Stanton Island who roamed neighborhoods hunting for children to abduct and kill. Ew. And the stories were widespread by children over campfires and were not particularly, you know, noteworthy. They're just urban legends everywhere, and many places have supposed boogeymen who abduct children in night. Like I said, El Kakui, Krumpus. You know, there are more. There are much more. But in the 1980s, the story of Cropsy 
goes from being an urban legend to being a real thing. Okay. Children and young adults actually started disappearing in Staten Island. Serial killer. Yeah, killer. yeah. Then the culprit was discovered to be an employee at the Willowbrook State School, and that was an institution for children with developmental disabilities. Andre Rand, he was a janitor at the school, and he was homeless and living in a homemade tent on the grounds of the institution. In the 80s? Yes, in the 80s. And uh, it was discovered that he kidnapped and killed a young girl with Down syndrome who resided at, you know, it said that she resided at the institution, but I don't think she was from the institution, actually. I think by the time all this was going on, the institution had been shut down. But he was also suspected to have murdered several other kids. Is he hurting them or just killing them? Don't know, but there wasn't enough evidence to convict Rond of any of the murders. He was sentenced to several counts of kidnapping and... You know, supposedly he's not eligible for parole until 2037 when he'll be 93. So, how Staten Island got the name for this maniac, nobody knows. But here's something that's interesting. is There's a 1981 film called The Burning. It's a slasher film, and it's about Cropsey. And uh, New York filmmaker, now this is where it does get creepy. Okay. Uh, the gross piece of shit, Harvey Weinstein... He was one of the original story writers for that film. And there's no doubt that he probably got that or he was inspired from the different campfire tales and the stories he heard as a child. So in that movie, Cropsey is a disfigured camp counselor and he's out for vengeance. They play a cruel joke on him. He gets burned Aww. and they can't do anything to help him like at the hospital. And he comes back from it. Um, and even when like, uh, I think he tries to get a prostitute and she won't even be with him because he's just so horribly disfigured. So he decides to take vengeance on the camp and he goes there and he starts killing. It's called the burning. That's, that's what it is. I mean, I kind of agree yeah. with him. Though. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> there's a really good documentary too. And this is what turned me on to Cropsey and it's by two Stanton Islanders. Um, and they both grew up and they heard the legend. It's uh, a really good film. It won some, uh, I think it won some, uh, awards, and it talks about Andre Andre Rand, Rand, I think is how you say his name, who was the orderly that worked at Willowbrook from 1965 to 66. And uh, so Willowbrook, it opened up in 1938, and it served as a home for disabled children until it was used as an army hospital during World War II. After, after the war, it was reopened again as Willowbrook School, and the population of students swelled to an unimaginable amount of you know kids. So Willowbrook was called a school, but it was nothing more than a warehouse for the developmentally disabled. Robert F. Kennedy had called Willowbrook a snake pit back in 1965, a snake pit. Um, Yet it took quite a few years to shut Willowbrook's doors. The place was renamed the Stanton Island Developmental Center in 1974, and it took another 10 years for all the patients to be discharged from this place. And what ended up happening is in 72, there was a doctor that worked at Willowbrook. He was so upset about the treatment of the patients and how bad and just gross it had got there. Famous news anchor and reporter, Geraldo Rivera, he slipped him a key. And Geraldo Rivera, he snuck in and he filmed everything that was going on. And he broadcasted awesome. this. Oh, yes, it was good. And there was like just children in their own filth, Aww. naked, and just not being taken care of. They had like a skeleton crew. There was also uh, claims that there was experiments with hepatitis that were conducted there, My God. resulting in infection of the patients. Well, there's a doctor to be, oh, you know, oh to yeah, them. oh yeah, I agree. So, the legend of Cropsey, like, so there's the urban legend, and then there's the real stuff, you know, with Andre Rand, and like I ta- was talking about, he was a former employee of Willowbrook. He was not a patient. Uh, and he was able to get this job. They didn't conduct background checks there. And it was supposedly, I think his mom was there, and like he ended up getting a, getting a job there. But he was yeah. Ron. He was his. He he had a, a conviction for sexually molesting a nine year old girl. Oh my God. Yeah. After he left. Uh, so he had a lot of mental issues. Yeah, he did. He was. If you watch the video of him, like uh, when they captured him, he's got this big look on his face, like. He's dazed, and he's got all this amount of saliva and drool coming so out. Slow, like- uh, they, I think so. I, I think he, I think he is, or I think he was. Um. Uh, so the Staten Island victims that Andre Rand, Ron, and I, I don't, like I said, I don't know how you say it. Like, I think it's Ron, Andre Ron. Okay. Um, they all what they all had in common was uh, they were just they were young. And the only body to be found was a shallow grave on the Willowbrook grounds. It was 12-year-old Jennifer. Uh, I think her last name was Schwiger. 
and she was the child with Down syndrome. Mm. Her remains were found after exhausting 35 days search after her disappearance in 1987. Andre Rand was convicted of kidnapping her, but due to lack of physical evidence at the time, he could not be pinned to the murder. Later, he was t- he was tied to at least three other disappearances. In 1972, there was a five-year-old Alice uh, Pereira, and in 1981, a seven-year-old named Holly Ann Hughes. Ron was later convicted of her kidnapping, but not her murder, and an 11-year-old diabetic young girl named Tyhees Jackson. And then in 1984, there was a 21-year-old named Hank Gaffario, and he was a well-known, friendly neighborhood man who had mental challenges. Um, He had actually helped search for Holly Ann Hughes, and he was called on film during a newscast about her disappearance. (laughs) Me. Yes. So he. So one of the people. I'll be on the news one day, and I'll be like, "So get this," and the next day, I'm the next one disappearing. Yeah. So that's what happened. Like he was helping search for one of these victims, and then he's one of the next ones to disappear. Three of these bodies were never found. What the heck? Yeah. The victims also deviate from the crops, the urban legend narrative, and even the Willowbrook child abuse story as these children were never patients. So that's what I was saying earlier. None of these people were patients, nor were they scouts on a camping trip, just like in the movie. They were just, uh, they were snatched from their homes where they lived with loved ones who desperately searched for them. Staten Island pulled together as a community for a long amount. As, you know, and this searching for the remains of these victims. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. And the thing about Ron, he he will not talk. He'll do these things of uh, he'll like Is set. He a, an, he, unable to? No, no, no. What he'll do, he'll set up like interviews with people to come talk with him, and they'll get there and he'll cancel them. He does it all the time. It's it's very weird. It's, Sounds like he's a schizophrenic. Maybe? Yeah, he's multi personality disorder or also attention seeking. Yeah, uh, that, that that's what I think. Um, Many swear that he did it, and he was seen uh, in proximity of all the victims. Wow. Others cry in his defense that it was a convenient frame-up. Unnamed and Ooh. unlocated satanic cult members are thought to be the suspects because the, out there in those abandoned buildings, there was a lot of, like, uh, 80s was a time for satanic panic, as they called it. That's when, like, the yeah. satanic devil worship was becoming popular in culture. Could you imagine being the fall guy? Like, what if he's innocent? Now I'm leaning yeah. towards that. Well, my 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 what? suggestion is watch the documentary. You can find it on 2B2 by the two Stanton Islanders that made it, and it's fantastic. It's a phenomenal documentary. What do you think? Do you think he did it, or do you think uh, that it was a frame job? I don't you know. There's a lot of weird shit that goes on, man, like with the government. Yeah, and, man. I don't know. I, I I know, like, so part of me, yeah, I think he did do it. Uh, I need to go back and reevaluate the documentary and more of it because I don't want it to be one of those things to where he was just a fall guy, to where they needed somebody to fall, and then this guy, he was, you know, it's easy to point out this person that could have mental disabilities or have a certain look to him and yeah. blame him for something. But then again, there's a possibility that he could have done it too. So, I, you know, I don't know if it was just something like they needed a fall guy and they needed to go ahead and get somebody to make everybody feel safe. Yeah. But what I think is interesting is urban legends usually come from some type of truth. Exactly. Yes. And usually it's not the other way around. You know what I mean? Usually what happens is... Yeah, today, normally someone didn't just make all this up and then... Uh, uh, okay, okay, so yeah, like in the Texarkana murders, there's the phantom and he's killing people in Lover's Lane. Yeah. So, you know, the urban legend that, DeVry, that you know, comes from that is the man with the hook, the couple, they're in the... They're making out. The, the radio says, hey, a mental patient with a hook for a hand, he's escaped. And then the guy's like, fine, whatever. And then him and his girlfriend leaves. He gets out of the car. When they get home, he walks around to let her out. And there's a hook God. on the door because she had heard something. So, so you know, that was, that was kind of inspired by the, the phantom of Texarkana, who was never caught in the 1940s. Wait, he was never caught? Never caught. The, almost like the Zodiac. He's identical to the Zodiac. And there's, that's something else I want to talk about when they, him and the Zodiac killer. So, usually urban legends. You know, we go through Texarkana like... Every oh, time every we time go we go to, to Texas, Texas, we always go through there. We go through a Boggy Creek uh, territory in Falky, Arkansas. Maybe we should do different podcasts when in those we're locations. In these, yeah. I, I plan on it. I plan okay. on it because there's something I want to do with the Boggy Creek monster and then the Phantom of Texarkana. Right now we're not like because of my surgeries that I've been going through. We haven't. We 
kind of died back or your yeah. bookings and this summer you're going to explode and go yeah yeah and that's the goal everywhere. that's the goal yeah, yeah. so to, to end this one and put a, a little bow on it and there's so much more I could dive into with crops he just like the Jersey I just like the Devil name. I it love does it sound like a scarecrow yeah gimmick, that's you know? why I wanted to use it I love it because it was such uh, my whole wrestling gimmick is urban legends crops he is a Stanton say Island crop, say, three times. You, you say it five times you know like it's the Stanton Island bogeyman and I was like that's cool nobody ain't done it so I, I dig it and it's always fascinated me since that documentary there have been a couple movies aside from the burning made about Cropsy but back to what I was saying uh, it's interesting because urban legends usually come from truth and it's not the other way around to where an urban legend happens and then that morphs into a reality you know, so you yeah, had this in manifestation, of no course, doubt. So you but... have this Andre Rand or Andre Rand character. The Cropsey stories popped up in the 1970s on Staten Island about kids being dragged into the woods, and then Andre Rand comes along in the 1980s and he's dragging kids into the woods, right. and he's considered the real life Cropsey. It's just really interesting, and it's something I just wanted to bring up and talk about and just see what you thought about it. Well, it's definitely obviously not a cryptid and not so much supernatural it's actually it's a serial abnormal. killer like it's, it's yeah. spooky and, it's abnormal um sick son of a bitch but also intrigued by what if he was a fall guy yeah love the name uh horrible crimes disgusting preying on the innocent um people that just can't defend themselves they're yeah. just awful um i I, I, I'm going to say he was the fall guy. Okay. I'm going to say he's the fall point. guy. That's a fair point. A lot of people say that. Dude, there, uh, there, there's too many creepy higher-ups yeah. that are doing some fucked up shit. Oh, yeah. Like, you spoke of the disgusting director that abused his power. That yeah, got Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, that yeah. got canceled. I have a theory about the higher elites. I feel like... There's always fall guys. I feel like he was a fall yeah. guy. I, you you would be shocked at all the. Hey, people have said that. Kind people, people have said that. in LA that everyone's just like, oh, so, yep. oh no, they're worse than him. Oh yeah. They're worse. Oh than him. yeah, yeah. It's That's same why thing. a part of me is like, I'm glad I kind of branched off into wrestling as opposed yep. to my acting exactly. because they would have ate me alive. Yeah. And it's, I because I, I don't sleep my way into exactly. business. I'm not. I am not truly the doll yet. I, yeah. I, I do not sleep around. I am actually just a. A complete loser <laughs> but yeah. if i branched off into a full acting career and had you know been so innocent and and, and been exposed to that i would have been shocked absolutely yeah. shocked and now that i've went the wrestling route and there's a lot of crooks in the wrestling community like you and i were just yeah. disgusting about certain people sleeping their way in the business yeah. and it's like i am dumbfounded by people sleeping their way around. Yeah. Like, I thought I was just... I was just here to wrestle, ladies and gentlemen. I did not well, that's know... That's just life, man. That's just how it, that's how it all pans out. So, uh, if I if I did... I think there's a lot of fall guys. Oh, yeah. And so, with that director that we just mentioned, um, he a disgusting person, but definitely a fall guy as opposed to what really is going behind the oh, scenes. Yeah. So, Cropsy, I'm 50-50, but leaning more towards the... Uh, I think there's something else going on in new jersey that oh, we yeah. or in staten, staten island, island yeah. that we do not know about well that's where black dahlia stands on it and i stand on it i think it's possible he could have done it i'm just going to say i'm indifferent on it but either way regardless if andre rand was innocent or not innocent the fact of the matter is he is forever going to be associated with the cropsy legend and cropsy whether you believe in him or not he's had an impact on pop culture and he's had an impact on just urban legends so so take your vitamins kids eat your vegetables listen to your parents or cropsy's gonna come and get you oh no